great shot on the howitzer. AT gun dodges. Americans are just staring at it. It's right in front of them. Maybe move back. It, uh, that's my favorite part of movies where you just see people staring at, like, the thing coming in. It's like, maybe I should dodge that. Maybe the thing coming in in the sky, I should just walk away from. I know it would be a cool story to tell your kids, but fun fact, if you're seeing this giant apocalyptic thing in the sky or something coming right at you, you're probably not going to live long enough to tell your kids. Hello everyone, this is Grayshot170 here, bringing you another COH2 replay. This is a 3v3 on Redshift Winter, one of my favorite maps. And uh, yes, it's because you can send people to a watery grave. That's why it is my favorite. With us today, we have two Soviet and American versing, two OKW and a Vermach. They include Jeff, Martel, and Starkiller. All right, and ranks are kind of all over the place. A lot of play time to a decent amount of play time. Uh, no one knew, as far as I can tell. A lot of play time on the Axis team right there, so we'll see. Again, Kif Chicken and uh, Freezy as well on the Axis team. If you if you would like to submit a replay like someone did here, submit it to GrayShopProductions at gmail.com, and I will gladly take a look. I myself enjoy my newfound freedom of moving my legs during the course of this replay. Seriously, I can now move all over the place. It's fantastic. Ugh. Standing desks. What, uh, it, you know, one of the best things that you can do for just keeping that uh, blood flowing so that way you're not cooped up. Also a mat. If you're going to get a standing desk, make sure you get a mat for your feet. Otherwise, it's going to be hurting quite a bit. Make sure it's also a good mat because, by God, if it's a bad mat, you'll wear it out pretty quickly. Just a heads up. Um, also, don't have people blow you, uh, cause then when you, I, like, jump or anything like that, they don't, like, bang the ceiling being like, Shut up, kid! Also, they would tell it to me if I was yelling or stuff like that. AKA, if you're a streamer in an apartment, I feel bad for you and wish you the best of luck. Uh, anyway, don't worry, it's only my brother down below. We don't care about him all that much. Um, in any case, the American force is putting a lot of pressure on that Pioneer squad. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, you might want to pull that sucker back. Meanwhile, the Axe is doing a little bit better along the other fronts. They actually stopped the Allies taking their munition. Oh, sorry, their fuel. Uh, they grabbed their own fuel. Have an MG there. Probably better in the building. Um, small battle going on here. Great Ear Squad, uh, Volk Squad, and Sturm. Immediately realizing the situation. Star Killer's like, yeah, I'm out. Peace. And again, not a bad idea. If you know you're going to lose units in a fight, and especially if you don't know what that fight's going to entail and you don't feel comfortable with that fight, pull back. There's nothing wrong with not engaging an enemy if you truly feel you, you will lose everything. Just alert your allies so they know that flank is open, but most likely of a situation like this, where it's a, it's a 3v3 map, so it is a little bit smaller, and he's already here, so we can easily pump out his troops uh, back out to the front. Secondly, he'll probably have more troops now, that, and he didn't take any damage, so he's right back in the fight. And uh, if he can take it back and smash the axis, that's great. Now, unfortunately, if his ally has no idea this is occurring, which might be the case. I think his MG is not set up, so I'm assuming he's waiting for the enemy. All right, he's set up. Uh, that's going to suck. Maybe, actually, no, nope, Gradius Walt walked into it. Actually, he's walking away from the fight. Never mind, this is a bad teammate. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, maybe. Anyway, MG is going to suppress some of the infantry on, uh, coming on the flank. Uh, there is a sniper coming on in by Chicken. By the way, Keith went fortifications. Again, great for anti-fortifications. And, uh, well, the Zero Artillery is pretty much death to all units. Plus, Pack 43 is good against armor. Let's see if we got special operations. Again, with the combination of fortifications makes it just amazing. We actually have armored assault. All right. We've got a lot of good armor, and they can tell what the enemy's bringing out, which might be the reason why uh, the... Hold on. Oh, wait. Where the... Oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, I was going to say, which, which hopefully leads to a counter sniper. I thought he got something to counter the sniper. I guess I was wrong with that statement. Okay. I mean, not the first time in my life I've been wrong. But, we do, actually, going through this, Martel is going with a support spam. Very interesting. Very interesting. Because, again, that's great and all. And a lot of mortar stuff like that will counteract any uh, MG stuff like that the Germans might throw at you. But... The thing about it is if Germans can break through your MG lines, then you're pretty much wide open to lose a lot of units. 
Uh, speaking of which, Stern Pioneer is going on in. Against the American force coming in. All on the road, by the way, but they have enough firepower they could kill that. Volk Squad coming in. Sturm still kicking ass, taking names on the side of that house. Rifleman might get in, but the Sturm's like, cool, more lo Oh my god, Sturm's got in the building now. Murdering! That's... Oh, the rear one's dead. Oh. Oh, the Rifleman immediately pull back. They're like, yeah, we're not signed up for this piece. The MG's like, wait a second, where's our support? Oh, that sucks. Oh, at least the mortar support's coming on in. Stern Pioneer is pulling on back. Sniper might be able to help pick them off. They are six-man squads, so it will take a little bit longer than the American 5 or the British 4. But, uh, you know, Sniper will still pick them off slowly but surely. So you still got that. Meanwhile, it looks like the Soviets up here have pretty much locked down this territory. So Jeff is holding firm, making sure we got this, boys. Meanwhile, uh, we can see over here that Kifska is, I'm assuming, going to fortify this sector. He did lose it. He's going to need to take it back. It doesn't have a lot of troops in this sector. Again, kind of hoping for something a little more to kind of either take back or hold. But with the mortars, he may not try it. Uh, good reaction time on the sniper by uh, Chicken. At least he got out of there in time before he took any actually hits. Because usually, if a sniper's seen, gets a few hits and health's going to go down. No, he pulled out right as he was being fired upon, which saved him from taking a lot of damage. Uh, Stern Pioneers engage in conscripts, but there's more conscripts, so they're going to be pushed back. Plus, those pesky mortars are going to come in, and uh, it's going to be raining men. Oh, I'm sorry, raining body parts as the Sterns are pushed back. Luckily, Grandiers and Volk Squads are coming on in to push back the conscripts. They should have enough damage to deal with the conscripts if it was a by-themselves scenario. Great rifle grenade, by the way. But, unfortunately, we have these American forces coming on the flank. Now, he gets to flank for once. Uh, instead of being flanked, he does the flanking. Uh, so Star Killer will push back the Grandier Squad. Volk Squad's coming on in. Might have been better to get in cover in fight. Uh, the American forces, by the way, have no grenades, so they can't dislodge him. Ha oh, Searchlight coming on in. My, my apologies. I thought it was going to be a helpful half-track. Instead, we get a Searchlight, which is great for recon, but not so much in the anti-infantry department. Uh, Panzer II, though... That's, that's more like it. There we go. Unfortunately, the rifleman going to come on in and be like, hey, we have this anti-tank rifle grenade, so we're going to push you back. And uh, do they manage to fire it? They do not. But with the sniper fighting recon, they will push back the American forces. Even if they didn't retreat then, they definitely would have. We have a cache over here, which is a fuel cache. Another fuel cache over here. So the Germans doing a little better in their fuel. Uh, allies are doing a hell of a lot better. And that's because they have this territory over here. They have two caches themselves. They, and also, they have all this territory right here. Sniper, though, moving on in to try to pick them off. MG, unfortunately, having a bit of an issue. AT gun just rolling on in to kill the cache. That seems like an issue. Support gun, though, is for opening fire. But with the mortar fire and everything else coming on in, most likely they will not survive. Oh, wait. No. Oh, nope. Never mind. Mortar got it. No, AT gun will not. Uh, he can't get out of there with all that infantry unless they get suppressed, which isn't going to happen. So, yeah, he's dead. He, he's, yeah, there's no way. Also, these mortars are, if they're hitting that cache, they work close up to the front. Might have been better to push left and try to hit those. But the MG is suppressing them for the time. No, Panzer too, pushing and killing the MG. Can it kill it? Can it kill it? Come on, hit it on the retreat. Come on, get it. Come on, Panzer too. Crazy does get the kill, and the MG has been decrewed. Not killed, but decrewed. Uh, if it was broken over the ice and it fell to its watery grave, that's a different story. But, at least in this scenario, the MG is gone. Um, you could always recruit it, but with Martel's current lineup, he does exactly have the recruiting force. All his infantry is essentially support equipment, except for one unit, which is currently in repairs. So they're not getting that anytime soon, unless the Soviet wants to pick it up and requisition it for himself. Now then, American forces came on in to fight the Volk Squad, but the Panzer II is still there with the Sniper, which, by the way, has a total of 13 kills. Hot damn, chicken. You are definitely, uh, wow, great armor-piercing shot, uh, knocking out, uh, or definitely doing a lot of damage to those Conscripts. MG being set up to hold back the Conscripts while the Sniper, uh, pulls back to stay outside their range. Half-track as well is providing sights so they can see where the American infantry are and counter it. But, alas, he, they can't see that! Rifleman coming on in. Sniper trying to walk out of there, realizing the retreat path would kill him. Uh, they're going to have to retreat anyway, and unfortunately, it's going to be uh, death for that sniper. Damn, good. Again, he went in. The sniper can't retreat without hitting it. So, uh, yeah, he was screwed anyway. He really was. 
damn, he, again, I'm surprised that there wasn't anything to guard here. An MG in this position would have stopped them dead in their tracks. I understand the mortars are there, but I think they would be slightly out of range for that. Um, and it's not like this guy has a mortar to deal with it. I don't think he has grenades. He doesn't have grenades, so literally there would be just a bunch of dead infantry as they charge a line, uh, a ch charge an AT line. Great shot, though. F fuck it. Fuck smoke. He can just fire a shot straight through the brush and kill the Panzer II. Uh, great kill. Definitely will keep the um, Axis back as there goes their armor. Though, a sneak capture is being done by two Sturm Pioneers. How much, I mean, uh, real quick, while this current battle goes in as the Allied forces push forward, um, how much um, munitions do you have? Freezy has a lot, so we can also see some mines being placed if he can control the territory. Again, that will delay the Allies capturing it, possibly inflict some major damage. Uh, we do have a lot of howitzers being developed by, uh, was it Starkiller? I want to say it's Star, yeah, Starkiller. There we go. You know, there is a counter to the support spam, and that would be Stukas coming in from the sky. And uh, it's not the strike, it's just the walking Stuka that you have to fear. That thing got seven kills, but already halfway to Vet 1. Damn good strike for its opening salvo, especially for that distance. He was pretty far back. So good job, push back the mortars at the very least. Didn't kill anything, but definitely uh, Martel will take a little bit of time before they get back up on the front. Although he's saving up quite a lot of fuel. Uh, he'll definitely get up to tier 4 if he builds up another one. Though, again, with the manpower he's going to have to use on those support equipment, it's not going to necessarily help his situation because he's going to either choose, okay, do I get my troops up quickly or do I wait and then get the building up? Looks like he's going to wait to get the building up a little bit longer. Even though, theoretically, he could get a T-34, uh, I mean, fuel-wise, not manpower-wise. Fuel-wise, well, actually, no, if he didn't uh, buy that stuff... He would have enough for a T-34, probably by the 13-minute mark, which would be a damn good uh, unit to have so quickly in the game. Because I don't... Do the Axis have AT? No, this guy doesn't have AT. Man, they really want to kill that cache. Martel's like, that cache dies. <laughs> no, you cannot build a cache here. This is a no-cache zone. Uh, well, MG, unfortunately, misses the Volk Squad coming on the flank, so he's not going to be suppressed. Going to burn that uh, AT gun. Also, the... Uh, focus fire on the MG, so they're not going to suppress the infantry coming on in, and yeah, there goes the MG. Now they say T-Gun's going to retreat, but again, there's no infantry support. So right now, you just gave the Germans an MG and an AT gun. Take that back. Germans are going to grab fuel from it because they don't want it, uh, which is weird because they don't have an AT gun, and technically the Zis is an incredible AT gun for them because they could use the artillery ability to push them back, and it's not like they don't have munitions. They have a ton, so they could use the artillery ability to knock out the enemy mortars. But what do I know? I just casted like a thousand games at this point. What the fuck do I know? Uh, past the 10 minute mark so I can swear. <laughs> Probably, once again, I've sworn before, whatever. Uh, Ponzer 2 pushing on in, but the AT gun is pushing it back. Half track is on the field, there we go. Yeah, I thought the Germans would make one first, but no, the Americans build it along with well, I thought it was two howitzers. I guess he decided just one or it died. I'm going to guess one. That would be a lot uh, That'd be a lot happier ending. There was just only one howitzer. There was never a second one. It didn't die a cruel, unfortunate death. But uh, good news, at least for the allies, they are putting a lot of pressure on the Axis in terms of VP. So right now they have the um, probably 140-point VP advantage, which is always nice to have. Suka coming on in. Great shot on the howitzer. AT gun dodges. Americans are just staring at it. It's right in front of them. Maybe move back. It, uh, that's my favorite part of movies where you just see people staring at, like, the thing coming in. It's like, maybe I should dodge that. Maybe the thing coming in in the sky I should just walk away from. I know it would be a cool story to tell your kids, but fun fact, if you're seeing this giant apocalyptic thing in the sky or something coming right at you, you're probably not going to live long enough to tell your kids. So you may just want to get the hell out of there. Um, speaking of which, you may want minesweepers because goddamn, looks like someone was doing a lot of work. Now, unfortunately, he didn't react fast enough. Uh, or that, or the mine exploded on his Vercadmorpher. Uh, so that's unfortunate. Also, uh, Freezy has not upgraded his Panzer Headquarters building, so... Is he moving up his mortars to capture? I just realized that. He's moving up both mortars. Also, Panzer Headquarters being made. Yeah, yeah. Mar Martel, Martel. So, 
But once again, I, I feel like we've come under this same scenario before. And I feel like, hopefully you learn from this, that you need some frontline units. I, I hope we've learned this. Because you can't keep losing equipment. Alright? You, you, you can't, Martel. Because you will lose this game. My god, you will lose this game. Uh, anyway. This, this Axis player, Freezy's like, yeah, I'm going to take the mortar. Why not? I don't get a mortar. I get a support gun. I'll take it. I mean, to be fair, any equipment you can get that would be beneficial. At the very least, it looks like Jeff has managed to uh, learn. Oh, my God. Martel and Jeff. I, I know one of you already went with it, but you hit toggle player list. You can see the commanders. You can see everything. Don't double up on commanders. That is a big no-no. And by God, you broke my rule. You doubled up with commanders. Now, hopefully, you pump out a lot of armor. I already see two T3045, so, okay, I'm, oh, it, you know, right now, I'm okay with it. But if the Axis managed to counter your armor, then your doctrines have pretty much become kaput because you doubled up and they were able to counter efficiently. Uh, Panzer IV, pop some shots against the Rifleman. Stuka's coming on in. Not entirely sure where. Oh, never mind, on the Rifleman. Oh, going for the AT gun. Great shot with the Stuka. Uh, gets another... Alright, I think that's like three shots and he's gotten 14 kills. Not terrible. Could be better. But at least he's getting kills. He, uh, I've seen players who have fired it ten times and gotten only three. So, at least he's getting something with it. Ugh. I, I... Alright, so we got T-3045 pushing on in. Now, luckily... In this scenario, small problem. Uh, and th this is that mine that's literally staring them in the face. Uh, say goodbye to the armor. Because it has a broken engine. Uh, unfortunately, the Vercat... Oh, it has been recruited. So if this thing moves on up, it's screwed. Another T-34 coming on in, pushing the infantry onto the ice. It's like, you guys go on the ice. I'll take the dirt road. There's not enough room for both of us here. We're on the same side. Doesn't matter. Oh, another mine. God, I love mines. And the funny fact is, this guy is double minesweepers. Hot damn. Anyway, T-3485 being hit by the Vercan Warfer, bringing it down to half health with the mine as well. Stern Pioneer is coming on in. I'm assuming provide recon. Vercan Warfer, though, doing the stop-start motion where it just gets ready, aims, and then unfortunately it's like, oh, shoot, I range. Move up a little more. Aim. Up. Oh, I range. Move up a little more. That's when you have to be more proactive and charge with it. I'm not saying he should charge with it head on because it is a Verken Werfer. It isn't that strong of an AT, and there was, it looks like he didn't scout enough or playing hard enough because there's an MG right there. Goddamn, uh, Stuka, I'm really going to ask for your, your your assistance here. Oh my god, Stuka, please go. Oh, I see. I see so many, possible, so many possibilities. Allies did seem to decapture this point, so good for them. Uh, Flamethrower Squad is capturing it, so, you know, that's working. But with the amount of Germans here. We'll see how long he lasts. I swear to God, if he gets another mine with that T-34, I'm going to riot. Please get a double whammy. One. Up. Oh, definitely lost the unit. I mean, he's losing infantry. He's getting another Vercan Warfare. With the amount of infantry he's pumping out, he had a lot of manpower reserve. I'm surprised he didn't get more AT sooner. As soon as you see one T-34 or you're like, okay, I'm getting, R I'm getting AT. I need some major AT. One Vercan Warfare is not going to cut it. American forces pushing forward. Looks like they did kill the searchlight, which will decrease the the German's ability for recon or de detecting enemy units on the other side. Oh, uh, let's see. Star Killer went rifle company. Not a bad doctrine. You could counteract the infantry with the uh, white phosphorus, and then you get some good medium armor as well. So it looks like all the allies would advance medium armor. The Axis, on the other hand, we have a Tiger Ace, fortifications, special operations. So they have enough to counter said armor. But will the Allies be able to pump out enough armor to counter that? Uh, T-3045, if this was a normal 76 variant, that Panzer Headquarters might actually win that fight. But because it's an 85 and has a slightly better armor and better weapon, it should be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against that Panzer Headquarters. Which is sad, I know, for me saying, me have to justify that. But I'm not joking. Like, literally a T-34 will die to a Panzer Headquarters. This guy's going over ice. I already see some great things in my near future. Please bury that tank. Please. Dang it. I was so hoping for 
like just it to go down and convening into the lake or creek, whatever you want to call that. Two T-34-85, so coming on in to the fight. Uh, they're trying to cut off that T-34. Where's the AT? Oh, it's slowly moving on up. Okay, finally it's in range. One Panzer, oh sorry, yeah, one Panzer Four is dead. They're still trying to kill it. For Ken Riffers, maybe dive the Panzer Fours when you have the AT guns. That, uh, at the very least, you killed the mortars. Uh, that might have been an accident, but hell, you got it. For Cadmorphers, though, uh, should be able to shoot him. Not sure why they're not. Panzer IV did save the Panzer headquarters, so maybe they're just trying to save their ally. Unfortunately, the T-3045s are just going to skadoodle, and they're going to be fine. None of them died. They all made it out. Meanwhile, the Germans took some heavy casualties. I'm not saying the Soviets did not, and the MG's firing upon it again, so... Once again, this idea of don't charge with support has somehow, somehow carried over to the Axis. I don't know if it's a worm that the Axis got or a virus. God, let's not let's go down that rabbit hole. But, for whatever reason, the Germans are now leading with support weapons. Also, I'm looking here, Martel is pumping out T-3045. So he said, screw the support weapons, armor is the future. Problem, armor still needs infantry support. And if the enemy has a lot of Pack 43 stuff like that, you're effed. But, the good news is, looks like you have players like Starkiller, that actually has a decent amount of infantry force, and, uh, Jeff, who actually, I would say has a good infantry force, he has some good Vet 3 infantry with his conscripts, so that's a decent amount of kills. The Germans, like Freezy, is pretty much down to a recruit basis. There. Uh, we got a stew coming in by Chicken. Sure, why not? I mean, he's not gonna get Tiger Ace anytime soon with that fuel and calm. Stu would probably be 180, so, theoretically, it could be another four minutes before you get it maybe not a bad idea maybe just wants armor out sooner and maybe a stug army would counteract the t-34 army unfortunately though uh jeff is not getting a t-34 army he's just getting a an is2 so uh yeah that's gonna do a lot to anti-infantry but yeah the americans keep shredding the infantry that the germans have they'll be doing fine now unfortunately stuka is coming in to counter that and also it looks like Kifska is deploying a Stuka. Once again, fine, but it, you guys better keep pumping out those mines all over the place. Because if those T-34s, like, maybe I should just sacrifice one. Hopefully kill a Stuka. He kills a Stuka, you're gone. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be beneficial for you guys. Panther coming on in. What's, why are these mortars charging? I mean, it's low on health, don't get me wrong. But the guy's a command panther and the MGs are shredding you. The, the, there, there is a pretty sweet and I would say badass armor force lying in wait. So I, I, I can't deny how sexy that is. He, he definitely has a very awesome force that can probably counteract the command panther very quickly. Uh, problem, I would probably say, is A, all of his infantry are pretty much non existent, and B, the Germans have double for catamorphers. Also, there's still some mines there if he tries to go for a deep flank. Command tank, I swear to fuck, if you're over the ice. That's right, you don't go over the ice. Not all right, some nice shots. Oh my god. You pissed off a hornet's nest. Uh still getting shot. Command Panther firing long range, pushing back the armor. Stug A oh my god, yes, a Soviet AT gun being taken. Uh we have a Stu Stormvik strike, I'm assuming, coming on in. That white phosphorus. Uh we'll see. It's Stormvik strike. Vet 3 support gun, not hot damn. Alright, someone has good veter veteran units. Stuka coming in, little light, I'm assuming just maybe blocking the armor, not entirely sure, but whatever it is, they definitely uh, didn't do all that much with that Stuka bomb, At the, unless their whole plan was destroying the ice, which if they did, great, you did quite a bit. AT guns beaten and crude though, and a lot of the armor they have here probably can't measure up in a direct competition with all the armor the allies have, which includes three two, uh, four T-3045s and IS-2, and a Jackson, along with the Easy 8 so... A lot of things you have to deal with. Also, this American infantry, really damn strong uh, for the most part. Again, it's retreating, so at least it lived, but it's been going up toe to toe with some of the best units on the axis, so really good job there. Huge armor push coming on the left hand side. The Stuka needs to get the hell out of here. Someone wasn't placing their mines, and uh, yeah, it's showing because all three T34s are rushing on in, even though this guy's plenty of munitions. Maybe saving up fortifications? I don't care. Meanwhile, you have all this armor coming in. Stuka opening fire. Oh, there we go. We knocked out something over here and killed the house. Meanwhile, T-34-85s are making their hasty escape. 
Armors in need repairs, which is probably why they didn't go in to engage. Again, leading with support, I it immediately causes him to retreat. Great job. Axis, at least a recap mid. They're slowly, sl they're they're making the gap uh, less impactful, but I'm, I'm I'm not entirely sure. Well, I don't know. They like the problem is they're taking territory, but they're not getting kills. So the problem is I could easily see the uh, Axis uh, being led into a fight they think they can win when in actuality they can't. Army size, we're talking about an Axis with mid 60s, but the Allies are easily like upper 70s, low 80s. Like they have a decent sized army, oh, upper 70s. Like they have a decent sized army and a lot of manpower. Like Jeff is doing freaking great with his manpower. He's not sending them in to die, it's astounding. Uh, so if they charge and there's nothing stopping the infantry from killing the Brakanwerfers, which again, I think a little too far forward, and also grouped together. I don't know why, I, I, look, okay, never mind. I know why people do this. It's a lot easier to micro and maneuver, but putting one Brakanwerfer over here and one Brakanwerfer over here would definitely help. IS-2 has been marked. Brakanwerfer's opening fire. Units are suppressed, which should help. Nice grenade. Oh my god, that might kill some of them. IS-2 taking a lot of damage. Brakanwerfer's trying to focus, maybe? Bounce, I think. Storm Vic Strike coming on in. Massive armor charge in this sector. Gonna need some support for all this. Arm. Oh my god, all the machine guns are coming in too. Once again, a little bit a little bit lax. So they're all the support equipment's in the back, but at the very least it's coming on now. Panther getting a nice shot. At least Panzer Headquarters can stay in the fight. Both for Cat have been decrewed and being killed. We need armor over here. Where are the ally where are the Axis? They're going in for a deep strike. Fun fact, there's no artillery. It's just armor, so you're not going to be able to do all that much with a quote-unquote deep strike. Uh, they might kill one T-34. Oh, there we go. Yagpons are diving into the mix. Fun fact, dude. You will not win that fight. Keep your distance. They're just opening fire long range. Uh, where's the additional AT? Hit the ice? Mine. Mine slows them down. All right, Yagpons are now while the armor is pinned. Keep picking them off. Because, again, if the lead takes pain, they're going to be slower, which should allow you guys to keep paying them. Command Panther and the Yagpons are hitting two different angles. Really good plays here. Really good maneuvers. Trying to break the ice. Missing both shots. Panzer Headquarters opening fire. Can we break the fucking ice? Panther getting the hell out of there. Panzer Headquarters still providing support. Yagpanzer does get a kill. Trying to kill the second one for Kaidwerfer, though. Remanned by the Soviets with his one assault. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Don't go over the ice. Oh, thank God. You are so lucky. That ice broke. I saw that. You were, like, bouncing over the water. Smoke to gather. Oh, nice shot with the stew. Coming with the clutch to save the Panzer IV. Yeah, uh, sorry. Command Panther kills it. Jackson dies over the water. Good job, Stu. Unfortunately, Easy 8's coming on in. Did the Panzer IV live? Uh, no, it did not. Panzer IV did die a cruel fate. Um, uh, Easy 8's probably going to kill the stew. Does kill the stew. Uh, no mines there, no telemines or anything to stop them. A lot of losses for each side, but Jeff, I'm assuming, uh, yeah, his IS-2 lived. And it's fully repaired, because they have quick repairs. So now it's going to charge mid. What do the Axis have to stop it? Well, they have a Soviet AT gun looking the wrong direction. So, they're going to need to focus on something else. Stuka bombs could work, could definitely push back the infantry, even though the ice has been repaired. Um... Uh, Easy 8 is now popping shots. We got two T 3045s coming on in. Uh, this has become a war of attrition with armor. And uh, I don't think the Axis can win it. Holy shit. Freezy lost all of his infantry. I didn't even. I know he lost some. I didn't realize the extent. His headquarters is barely alive as this. This guy is once again charging with infantry. If he. If, oh my god. You, you're killing me here. You're killing me here. The, the the one positive is at least he's pumping out armor like crazy. Unfortunately, uh, and, and yes, the fact that this guy lost all of his infantry in a three-pronged assault. It did take a little bit for the uh, axes to come on in, but that being said, they don't exactly have much to... I swear to Christ. He has a King Tiger on the field. Okay. Sure. That would have been helpful. Also, what the fuck is Chicken doing? Requires heavy panzer corps. Does he not know that he needs a heavy panzer corps to deploy the time? Is he building that? Oh, he's, he's running back to base. 
He's like, oh shit, I forgot the heavy Panzer Corps. I need to head back. Oh, god damn it. So he needs to build that building to get the heavy tank up. In the meantime, the King Tiger and Yagpanzer have to solo pretty much the entire Soviet army, along with American support. So yeah, good luck with that. Jackson's doing work on the Yagpanzer because, uh, yeah. Uh, hold on. There was a... Do they have recon? Do they have sight over there? Oh, yeah, there's a there's recon of some sort. Hold on. Okay, there was a flare that must have went out from the American, because they can deploy flares. I thought I saw something, but it disappeared. Oh, once once again, T-34 is coming down on the right. Command tank, uh, Higgs and Debris having some trouble. I swear to God, he's probably yelling into his headset, Someone help me! And he realizes, oh shit, Company for us who doesn't have voice chat. Uh... This could be an issue. Stuka firing dangerously close to where all the armor is, although we'll actually do something. It's the half track, does a little bit of uh, some scratches, not that much. This thing marks targets one, again, the lead one to slow them down. Double Stuka's on the front still, no idea why. Maybe a good Stuka barrage over here would hit all the armor. Oh, break the ice, break the ice. Oh, damn it. Why can I think of things to do that no one does? Because they're so stupid, why would someone think of that? Well, this this tank's about to walk over the ice that all the other armor is. He also missed the shot, fortunately. Oh, Jackson coming in to finish him off. If he loses that Command Panther, that's a huge F. Oh, that's a big F right there. Command Panther has been knocked out. Stug and Yagpons are coming on in, but the Jackson might sur uh, will survive. And the armor just comes back to the base for some quick heals. Again, a lot of... Um, Let's see, how much munition he has? Oh, he has, he has 400 munitions. He could just heal his armor like that and just go back into the fight. Does he have another armored unit being made? No, he just made some more infantry. And by made infantry, I mean like made MGs. All he's doing is MG spamming. Which is weird because you figure the guys with all the Stukas would counter that, but... Uh, I mean, they are, so never mind. He Unfortunately, the guy just can't keep a standing army to save his life. Also, his Panzer headquarters died, which can't help him. Because uh, that's what you need to deploy a Command Panther. It's a Panzer Headquarters. So, yeah. There goes their flank if this guy just slowly, you know, takes on over. Also, placing mines, possibly? No, he the German was placing mines. So now, I'm assuming it's left to his two allies. Kiff and Chicken. Chicken and Kiff. Uh, Chicken can finally deploy a Tiger Ace. Congratulations. I'm really happy for you. Uh, problem, you might not have anyone to support because those conscripts are trying to chase after the king. Most of them are likely to chuck some AT grenades their way in order to take out the enemy. My cat was right there. I was going to try to pick her up. She's like, nope. Anyway, uh, King Tiger's going to go in to fight. I don't think it's really going to work. If anything, I could easily see the amount of AT just shredding that tiger. The Agpanzer's coming on in, but it's not. They're gonna need more. The Zisk gun alone is going to start just pop shots without really much recourse. Plus the T3045s. Uh, the good news is uh, maybe they have a little more distance. Well, I can't see that. There's Zisk gun right there. Never mind. I was trying to think of a wave I could say like the Germans have a chance. Uh, at the very least, the Tiger Ace is on the field, so maybe that will help. Though it looks like Tiger Ace is busy fighting three armored vehicles all grouped together, because that's the fight the Tiger Ace wants to have. Hey guys, you heard of all those stories where it took five Shermans to kill a tiger, even though that's a standard. Uh, was it was it a, st a standard armor column? So that would be, of course, they would need that would be that much armor because that was standard. Also, it was an easy eight variant. Again, potential history, highly recommend it. We could easily penetrate tiger armor, or at the very least, could penetrate tiger armor for the front. It's so not that big of a threat as some historians. If you're a base Sherman. Sure, but they're not going to just send it in without, okay, you know, let's make sure we have some support. Not not just send them alone without any infantry or anything like that. Anyway, Flare is being dropped. Again, highly recommend potential, potential History if you've not seen his content. Uh, firing shots on the Panzer Headquarters. Uh, Rakan River coming on in, but the infantry once again comes into support. And push it back with no quit. I swear to F, he is not an AI. He is not an AI. So why? 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 Freezy, why did you get a Panzer II? Are you trying to replicate yourself as an AI? Are you? Are you trying to make yourself look like an AI? 
guys, I'm an AI, so I, uh, I, 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 of course, make the dumb mistakes an AI would by not retreating. He's not an AI. He is not an AI. <laughs> but he did, did not retreat the stupid with all the armor and say he charged it, and the armor is just going through and killing everything. King Tiger and everything, fighting all the armor in the front. They did kill one T3045. Unfortunately, he has another one being made. Oh, another one died. At the very least, looks like he actually won the fight because he didn't bring up the AT gun. So, uh, just sheer damage. We're just going t two T-34s and a, uh, an IS-2 versus that. I actually put my bets on these two. Fortunately, uh, I can't... Same can't be said for these T-3045s. They're just uh, kind of wrecking shop over here. There goes the stew. And my quarters will probably die. And that will get rid of uh, Kif's ability to deploy any more armor in the near future. Armor will retreat. There's a new one coming on in. Do you have any artillery left? You do not. Nobody. Yeah, no one has artillery. Armor's trying to heal, but AT. Nope. Oh, wait, well, it is pinned, so I guess there is a fa Oh my god, AT gun's like, remember me? Uh, Vercan, we're. Oh, sorry, not Vercan. A cervix strike coming on in. AT gun going after. Oh my god. The he is just going on in to kill. Gets the kill on the King Tiger by himself. T-34 comes in. I'll take the credit. Oh, my God. So, what can I say about this fight? Uh, okay. What I will say is this. I will say that Martel, I criticized your support's uh, leading abilities, along with everyone else who did this game, for whatever freaking reason. But your armor gameplay is actually top-notch. You actually is a good... You, you, again, you knew when to hate, you knew when to pull back. And overall, you probably did a lot better than Jeff, which is weird because, I mean, Jeff did very good in Xenon Preservation. They lost everything, pretty much, in that big push. Um, well, mostly everything. But uh, he did a lot better, I would say, um, in terms of, like, attacking and then pulling back his units. Except his support. I, I hate the fact he led with his support. But the Axis go counter it. They focus their artillery in mid. I get, instead of the giant blob that kept coming on the right. Also, I felt so bad for this guy over here. But that being said, he's absolutely lost his damn mind because I don't know why you deploy a Panzer II at the 37 minute mark in this game. Like, guys, guys, we haven't won the war yet. I know what we can do. Instead of getting big tanks, we go back to small tanks. We just go past the enemy. It's like, sir, we can't penetrate their armor with the light tanks. Shut up! It's our only plan. That's the only hulls we got left. They need to work. It's well, and I tell you, I say that, but he actually does have his Panzer right quarters up. Oh, good. He got himself an actual Command Panther. You know what would have been helpful, like a few minutes sooner? A Command Panther. <laughs> uh, he's still fighting three to one odds or four to ones in those situations, so probably not that useful. But yeah, pretty much the, all the German players lost everything. Uh, Damage-wise, Starkiller got the most damage, and he's the one who submitted this replay, so thank you, Starkiller, for doing that. Uh, why do you do that? So, for, And also, Martel got more unit kills. Although, I'd have to say those kills would probably be more in line with the T-34s, I would say, that are just cleaning house. Um, yeah, 60 kills with those T-34s. They almost got half the Soviet ca or kills over that game. He only lost two as well, so again, really good job there. Um... Jeff got uh, definitely less losses, but also less kills. So he did have a larger stockpile, but he also wasn't as aggressive um, as Martel. And yes, Martel definitely lost a lot more, but it did end up getting a few more kills and slightly more damage. Though, I'd say Jeff had better preservation overall. Martel had good preserva better preservation with his armor, though lackluster preservation with his infantry. On the Axis side, uh, Frezzy slightly, just barely gets more damage, but the kills goes to Kifska. Why is that? Um, first off, damn that support gun bet three. Very nice. But if I had to say, let's look at Kif's gun, we might be able to find that out. Also, no pack 43 or, uh, which would have been great, actually, thinking about it. You have a giant armor battle in mid, and your ally is constantly being up by armor, and yet you don't build a pack 43 like here to just shred all the shit coming on in. Like, they don't have artillery. I don't think even Starkiller has artillery, right? No, they have the mortars. And, okay, and a howitzer, that would be a problem. But, eh, maybe move it a little farther back, you're fine. Uh, j just one of those weird things that 
you, you take notice. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, Frezzy, I'm going to say, is Command Panther. They were just doing damage. Although, his ver Ken Morphers could be a close second. Um, 34 kills the Suka. Eh, okay. Uh, yeah, definitely the Panther got slightly more. For Ken Morphers, though, it did a lot of damage. My only problem was they were always very close to the front. You need something to guard them. Fortunately, you didn't have much of an army by the end of it, but that that's my recommendation. Overall, I would say probably the best army together would probably be Starkiller. He was, again, I, uh, he has great unit preservation. He did retreat a lot early game, but he didn't honestly... Oh, hold on, unless I'm talking on my ass, which I don't think I am. Uh, no, okay, not great preservation, but he does have a lot of Vet 3 infantry. So, I'll give him credit there with a lot of freaking kills. So, his infantry gameplay was top-notch. He did come in with some nice clutch moves with the Jackson as well, and definitely helped out. Overall, great game for the Allies. A little more coordination as well, because they definitely broke Freezy. Just like, in ha they're like they're, he could not defend this side anymore. They, it, it, and that's a little weird. Although, it's not like they weren't attacking other flanks. They did push here, but the, the combined Axis effort did stop. And the Axis did come over once to help, but it was very late. And it, did, it kind of made the battle more mute. It didn't make it decisive for either side. It was just kind of, eh. Both sides lost stuff. It wasn't a huge victory for either but allies came back and delivered another decisive blow and i went and again i'll have to say the attack over here worked because i thought they would push over here again but no they came right back over here maybe that's what threw the axis off they're like okay they're gonna attack over here now and then by the time they set the forces over literally freezes like i need help and they're like we can't help you get best of luck but uh yeah that's gonna be it uh for this replay remember guys uh if you want to support the channel then my patreon link is down below if you want to submit replays my email is also down below gracialproductions at gmail.com highly can recommend you check that out to submit the replays also you can submit replays on my discord if you are a sub or something like that i've had a lot of people send, send uh non-replays so that's why you have to be like the sub or something in my discord to submit replays but in any case it's been great shot 17 and i'll see all of you next time Hello everyone, before I go, I want to give a special shout out to Patreon supporters, Joey G240, Josh, Malam, Ace, Ion, Ollie, Pyroshark, and Jacob Allsway. Thank you all so very much for your amazing support. You keep this channel going, so thank you. Remember guys, if you want to be an awesome Patreon supporter, you can do so down below. But otherwise, it's been GrayShaw17, and I'll see all of you next time.